note page 173 in our unit of solutions. So we're going to look pretty quickly at the parts of a solution during this video. The first part of any given solution, it has a solvent. Every solution has a single solvent. This is the substance that does the dissolving. Its job is to pull the solute into the solution. So if you take a look at our beaker, the arrow is going to point to the portion of the solution that represents the solvent. Our most common solvent is water, so get that memorized because water is our reference point for almost everything we do in chemistry. And what the solvent like water pours into the solution, we refer to as the solute. So the solute is the substance that is dissolved. The solute is pulled into the solution. And if you take a look at the beaker, those little green dots represent the solute and it's being pulled and distributed throughout the solvent. And as a general rule, if you look at the proportions of solvent compared to the solute in any typical solution, there tends to be more solvent than solute present. Now there are different ways to classify a solution and one method is to classify the solution based on the type of solvent present. So if the solution is referred to or classified as being aqueous, that means that the solvent is water. Water makes up the largest portion of the solution. Aqueous or water-based solutions have a large variety of solutes. So typ typical solutes would be any type of ionic compound, which we refer to salts, or any molecule that, it, that is polar. It has an asymmetrical shape. So some great examples of aqueous solutions would be salt water, sugar water, wine, and vinegar. Now other solutions fall under a category by the name of tincture, kind of a funny word, but traditionally or back in like the 1800s and be even before that, tinctures might have been referred to as spirits. So a tincture or a spirit-based solution is when the solvent happens to be an alcohol. So alcohol makes up the largest portion of this type of solution. Example solutes would be plant extracts and medicines. Maybe or like herbalists are known for creating tinctures. So some examples of tinctures, not quite as common as aqueous solutions, would be tinctures of iodine or even opium. And back in the 1800s, a tincture of opium had the, was referred to as laudanum. There are also, they could also be referred to as spirits of, and uh, probably a more common spirit of would be a spirit of camp for. So a lot of great and interesting history about tinctures. Another major type of solution is known as an alloy. And if it's described as an alloy, that means that the solvent is some sort of metal. Um, so once again, this the solvent or the metal would make up the largest part of the solution. Great example would be iron. The solutes in an alloy would be other metals present in lesser mass or composition. And also another common solute would be the element carbon. Example of, examples of alloys, um, iron-based alloys, steel. So you have surgical steel, stainless steel. Um, some decorative alloys that you should be familiar with would be the bronze and brass alloys. Solvation. This happens to, this describes the process or the action of water as it is dissolving a solute. Um, we won't get into too many details on this, 
But can water dissolve a solute? And you have your little saying, likes dissolve likes. If you have a polar solvent, water, your best example, and you mix a nonpolar solute with that water, that nonpolar solute will not dissolve. Um, once when it's mixed with the water or put in the same container, it will separate itself from the water and often create some sort of layer, layers within the water or within the container. So nonpolar solutes are insoluble in a polar solvent like water. If you have a polar solute and you place it or mix it with water, which is a polar solvent, likes dissolve likes, polars dissolve polars, so this polar solute will dissolve in the water, meaning that it readily mixes or blends. There is no separation or layers formed. Polar solutes are soluble in water. Now, ionic solutes, which we often refer to as salts, they are often descri described as extreme polars or expolars. So ionic solutes are extremely polar, and because of that, they will um, behave in water like a polar solute. So ionics tend to dissolve in water, meaning they mix or blend, and tend to be very soluble. Now, if you have a nonpolar solvent, like oil, and you place a nonpolar solute in it, likes dissolve likes. Nonpolars dissolve nonpolars. That means that that nonpolar solute will mix or blend with the nonpolar solvent. The nonpolar solute is soluble in the nonpolar solvent like oil. If you place a polar solute into a nonpolar solvent like oil, um, nonpolars will not dissolve polars because they are not alike. They have opposite polarities. So that polar solute will not dissolve in the nonpolar sol solvent. And in fact, it will separate out or create some sort of layer. So polar solutes are insoluble in nonpolar solvents. Since ionic solutes are described as being extremely polar, ionic solutes behave like a polar solute in a nonpolar solvent such as oil. So once again, they will not dissolve. The ionic solutes will separate from that nonpolar solvent. They are very insoluble.